Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what are some examples of JavaScript code that most programmers write poorly and how do you write it correctly? So let's get into it. Well, uh, this is very, it's a difficult question to answer uh, because I don't really have any concrete example of something that is just people write universally poorly. I had to really think about this one for a while because I can only, like at the top of my head, if we're just, you know, we're excluding frameworks, we're excluding, you know, other underlying things because usually what I find to be the hardest part with JavaScript projects, regardless of its front end or if it's Node, is the overall structure. People have this tendency to care so much about the developer experience that they actually cripple and cripple the entire project because all of the damn libraries they need for pointless things that that gives some small subjective value and it's like the biggest. Uh, it's like we're popping the libraries like painkillers at this point. It's uh, it's very frustrating to work with people who who do this because having all these dependencies, it's just legacy waiting. Um, um, it's been proven to me m many times over that even some fundamental libraries will at some point become less ideal and the more you have, the likelier you are to have problems. But if we're just going to consider coding related things like how to structure things and this, of this nature, I would say that there, I can give you one example for front-end and I can give you one example for back-end work. So let's start with the front-end. One of the things that I think is truly bad within front-end today is that no, and this is kind of a testament to, uh, to this lack of in-depth knowledge about systems, like system development overall, I would say, or maybe it's just a culture thing. <clears throat> but what usually happens is that when we write front-end code that n communicates with some form of network, what's always been baffling to me is that we write code in a fashion where we simply assume the, the shape of the server code. In other words, we take whatever comes over the network and then we try to fit that into, like based on what's coming over, we try to make the semantics and the shape uh, of the data that we're getting to, into something that just fits. Like we basically write our entire application around the structure of the payload that comes from the server. Now, that is very opposite as to how things work on the server. If you think about the server for a moment, what usually happens or what should happen in pretty much every single situation in server-side work is that there is a payload or a request of some sort that comes to the server and then the server is responsible for validating that this data is in the shape that it needs. And at the, if, it, if it's optional or something like that, it is, it's going to have to map over these values into different domain models or you know, some type of shape that makes sense to the server. And this is fairly standard practice. In type languages, we call it serialization. Now, in front end, we don't do this, which I think is the, it's a very bad thing because most of the issues that you will have when working with front end related JavaScript comes from that there is a mismatch from, on the data that's coming from the server in some fashion, or you've written things in such a way that you make certain assumptions in the, around your program, right? And that's the thing that I think we should get away from. If you want to have the benefits of, say, creating generic components or anything like that, it makes a lot of sense for you to upfront declare what you want your model to look like. In SPA land, a lot of people are trying to go for these standardized components and make them truly reusable. But how can you do that unless you've already decided what the semantics of a component is going to be and how the shape of the data needs to look in order for it to work as you want it to look? Now, what I suggest that we do here is to validate the incoming data. Like an example would be to use something like TypeScript. You need to do a little bit more tweaking than that to be 100% sure that the thing that is coming over the network is in the shape that it needs to be. But at the very least, if you're getting a payload, I th personally think that you should consider it to be just as working on the server. You should validate the data 
and you should ideally not just accept it as it looks. You should really ask yourself whether or not this data fits into the front end aspects of things. And if it doesn't, then remap it, I serialize it. It's not really what you're doing, but you map it into a model that makes sense for your application. Because with the decoupling that comes from using XBA frameworks versus and service in the, in the server, right? And just having an API driven application, like one of the strengths of that is that you now actually have two different applications. So why should one application behave as if the logic and the like the response of the API should be the thing that is should be the thing that dictates how the behavior of the of the front end application should be i think that that's very bad because you don't like if the interface changes or something doesn't work in the way it should work then if you check that up front, because that's the start of the program, right? The network call comes out or goes out usually. And from that point, you have an unknown in your front end code. So you need to make sure that you actually figure that figure out that you have the thing that you actually are looking for as quickly as possible. That's at least how I feel about it. And for server side work, when we work in Node, one of the most common problems I see people doing is that when they create their server, usually in Express or Happy or things of this nature, they don't really have a scalable solution for how to structure their controller endpoints or their action handlers or whatever you want to call them, the, uh, the request callbacks. So what usually happens is that they put pretty much all of their business logic in the controller. And I think that's also a very bad thing. I think that one of the things that Node developer development really, really lacks is a culture around scalable enterprise development. And I believe that the best examples for this sort of structure that really works, it's tried and true and it works for, mo for quite a lot of companies, is to mimic uh, more mimic the the structure with that is used in cl classic domain driven de and design and is very common in languages like Java and C sharp, where you don't put all of this logic in the controller. You have a service layer or different services that you instantiate with which you know can depend on other services within the code, and then these are just abstractions on top of your business logic. Now, this is not a perfect way of writing software, but it is a very, very sustainable and very scalable way of writing software. And that's the thing that you're fighting. That's the thing that is the most complicated over time to get right. Architecture and all of this stuff, that this is the thing that really, really makes the difference when the project grows big. If it's a small project, who cares? Then it's very unlikely that you're gonna get things wrong. But by just having this mindset, like borrowing this idea from these languages who are, you know, use induced in systems that are at the scale that ideally your application should reach at some point. Because I mean, it doesn't, it, it works as well on, at small scale as it works at really, really large scale if you do it co correctly. And I think it's a much more scalable solution than putting everything in the controller, which for, I can tell you for a fact only works up to a certain point. And after that, it's going to just become a big mess of, uh, well, procedural logic that causes a lot of confusion and a lot of issues with maintainability. So what I want you to take away from this is that for me personally, I think that in front-end land, the thing that most people do poorly is that they simply accept the payload that comes from the server, however it looks, and then they write all of their front-end code around how the shape of, that da of the data that they're getting looks at that specific moment in time. And I think that's really bad. I think that you should declare what you need in order to make your front end components actually work the way that you want them to work and then have a mapping layer or a serialization layer that converts the incoming data from the API into that shape. That means that you can validate data and tell, you know, log out if something is missing or something isn't in the right shape or something is unexpected. And it also breeds this mindset of writing logic that makes sense in your domain. That's, pr that's exactly how the server works and it works very well. The second part is on the server. I think that we need to get away from this unstructured way of working in Node.js land where a lot, of, a lot of people don't really have a long-term plan for how to scale their system. They simply put all of their business logic in a controller or an endpoint handler of some sort or a request callback. 
and there's no there's no structure. So here you should have a look at the more senior, like the older languages, the enterprise languages like Java and C Sharp, and try to follow suit because you can do all of, pretty much all of these things that they do in Node.js land as well. And that will definitely scale to a bigger system than what you're likely doing by just putting all your code in the controller. That's at least how I feel about it. Have a great day.